Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am pleased to present my first ever tuning guide for all of you today. For as long as I've been in JSR, nearly three years now I think, I've seen so many requests from players asking JSR how to tune fast cars and also make typically mid-tier or mediocre cars go faster. So that's exactly what I'm going to do for you all in this series by covering cars in different classes as well as homologated divisions. Now a little disclaimer, I don't consider myself a truly elite player on Forza 7 by any means. Another note is I've always preferred racing cars without tunes as well as without assists so I can definitely sympathise with anyone who gets frustrated trying to tune cars and hope my tuning guide will be of help to you. With that said, in today's tuning guide I'll be showing you how to set up the well known grip beast of our class, the McLaren M8B. This is for the homologated division called Prototype Group Racers, which is often showcased in Forza 7's weekly league events and since it's running this week I thought it would be a great start to help players learn how to tune a typically hard car to drive. I'll be showing you how to tune it for a world record without any use of traction control too, which proved a tougher but far more rewarding challenge in this car. So here is a leaderboard lap I just set and as you can see the top times are littered with traction control which by all means is the most reasonable assist to use in high powered cars like this. But I personally believe it's not always necessary and there's a certain kind of fun I have in managing wheel spin without TCS and I'm sure that there are other people like that too. Why Catalonia National? I wanted to test against a tight circuit with different types of corners which this circuit is actually perfect for. In my opinion, the bumps, hills, chicane and mid-speed bends make it one of the best tracks on Forza Motorsport for testing grip and acceleration cars as you need to find a well-rounded tune setup in order to make a solid lap work. First up, a quick history lesson on why the McLaren M8B is such a famous car. The M8B was made to compete in the 1969 Can-Am, uh, which is abbreviated for Canadian American Challenge Cup, a series of sports cars with basically enormous V8 Chevrolet engines and monstrous rear wings. These were among the first race cars to have aerodynamics, sport spoilers, turbocharging, and the things which all pioneered motorsport engineering from that point onwards. Driven by founder Bruce McLaren and teammate Denny Holm, so the M8B dominated the 1969 season. Uh, fun fact, the team performed so much stronger than their competitors that the 69 season, along with a few after it, we ended up being called the Bruce and Denny show just because of how dominant they were. So how does the McLaren M8B drive in Forza Motorsport 7? It, well, it has a massive 7 litre engine which produces 590 horsepower with a restrictor. Couple that with the engine being mid-mounted, the M8B can be very unstable when trying to turn. Imagine lots of understeer on corner entry and massive oversteer on corner exit. By default, it moves quite floaty, but with a bouncy heaviness that makes it unpredictable and as you transition from turn to turn. This is what I've seen makes it very difficult to drive consistently fast and I've noticed players struggle a lot in multiplayer league lobbies the last couple of days. So let's take a look into the build that I made and the tuning setup that I've just shared. As I mentioned before, this is homologated for the prototype group racing division. So the PIA uh, maximum you can have is 850. So let's just tuck right into it. Um, you have the homologation restrictor plate. Um, you can't have the horsepower any higher than 590. So that means all of these are displacement, valves, ignition and fuel systems. You simply cannot use them because it will bump you immediately over, which is fine by me. It means we can focus more so on the other parts, such as the brakes. You can run with stock brakes, but for this build, I have gone with race brakes. I think it's important that you have that option in tuning to mess around with things like the brake bias between front and rear, as well as the brake pressure as well, because they're things that can make a big difference in your consistency and although this is a tune I've set a world record with I wanted it be, to be a tune that everyone can and race across different tracks and find that it's a reliable car to use so 
We have race brakes there which puts us up to 849 pi. Not much space to play around with other things but I'll show you what you can do. So with the transmission you have stock transmission. Sport transmission does not cost you any extra pi and it saves you one pound worth of weight. I don't particularly care about that weight reduction um, but it's important that you have the sport transmission because if you want to tune the car for certain tracks you will definitely want to optimize second and third gear for certain turns because otherwise you might have the torque kick in too soon on corner exit and the same thing might happen um, with basically downshifting and it just doesn't feel right on corner entry either so go with the sport transmission race transmission it's an extra 4 pi it puts us over the limit so not worth it drive line you can have it with this build you certainly can um, for some reason i just did not do it and hence why we have that 49 pi but hey if we can you know can still set fast times without a drive line then um, I, i'm not going to agonize over it Tyres, tire compound has to be stock, you can't have anything else, but what you can experiment with is the front and rear tire width. So I initially did have upgraded um, tire width on the front, turns out it feels very detrimental on corner entry, if the car feels a lot more sluggish under braking, and the fact that it costs you 5 PI as well may not well be a worthy investment. So we've ditched that, gone to stock front tire width. But we have kept rear tyre width upgraded though because with the amount of torque that that V8 engine kicks out we want a lot of traction available on the rear end of the car and it certainly helps around Catalonia when you have so many bumps and um, the car needs to be able to have as much contact with the road as possible. So rim style I have not played around with that whatsoever I suppose you can do that if you want to shave a couple of pounds. And lastly the rear wing. Um, stock rear wing, race rear wing, doesn't make a difference performance wise, I've just stuck with stock because you know it's a bit more reminiscent of the times when this car was out and I just think it's so bonkers that I kind of love it to be honest. Um, so yeah that is the build itself and uh, we'll now move on to the actual tune of it. Tire pressure 29.5, 29.5 gearing set it to 3.50 i think um this was a real sweet spot to be honest and um, especially through the first and second sectors of the track where you're using a lot of second gear this seemed to just deliver the best drive as well as stability actually whilst you're applying the acceleration it also important that you have the second gear just about long enough so that you can really floor it out of the final turn at catalonia and then you upshift to third as you clip the outside apex. Otherwise, it is, if you have the gear change too soon or too late, it could actually cost you a couple of temps as you approach the finish line. So, Alignment, very neutral setup. Camber is 1.2 negative, and then the rear is negative 1.0. Toe, front and rear, 0, 0. You can add this to like 0.2 if you want on the rear toe. Um, but I don't think it's really going to help you out. I think if you have like, severe issues with um, understeer or oversteer, you should play around with the anti-roll bars or springs instead. Front caster, we've put that up to six. It's originally on five. I think six helps a lot more when going through the final chicane of the circuit at Catalonia. So, you know, you, you want the car to transition quite smoothly, even with sim steering. Otherwise, the moment you apply the throttle, the towel's just, it's just going to whack out and you're not going to be able to recover the car. Anti-roll bars and the springs, you can see a similarity here. They're both relatively low and both set for a bit of oversteer. This is because we've got the full aero downforce, which I will show you later. But when you have full aero, then you do typically want your anti-roll bars to be a bit softer on the front compared to the rear. So we have 12.98 on the front. And then 22.09 on the rear. Springs, as I mentioned, um, already set up for oversteer on corner entry as well as uh, whilst coasting. But the rear is basically soft enough that it can sit whilst you apply acceleration. And that way it, it's just not going to spin into a circle every time you exit the corner. So from 199.8 and then the rear spring... 249.5 ride height 
4.7 on both the front and rear. Don't need it any higher to be honest, I had no problem with the curbs, so that's fine. Onto rebound stiffness, 8.0 on the front, rear 9.0. Bump stiffness, 4.0 on the front, rear 3.0. So the reason why we got the front a bit stiffer is because this will actually help with stability on corner exit. Um, you typically want the front bump stiffness just a little bit stiffer compared to the rear if you have is severe issues with oversteer and um, that goes in hand with having the rebound stiffness softer than the rear rebound as well. So something to bear in mind. Downforce as I mentioned is full, we've gone for a grip build so 2020 on the front for downforce and then 372 on the rear. Brakes, I kept it as 50, brake balance. I think because it's a mid-engine car, it, it doesn't do well um, if you make it any lesser uh, balance-wise, say it's just like 49 or 48. I think with that engine being mid-placed in the chassis, you want the weight of the car to move to the front as soon as possible, just so you can actually adjust the rotation of the car whilst you're braking, otherwise it's just going to keep going in a straight line. Um, braking force. 130%. I like to keep it relatively low nowadays and the closer to stock the better I think um, but this just obviously helps you find that braking point a little bit quicker whilst going into turns. And finally the differential. We have 50% on acceleration. That's to help curb down the amount of torque that's applied through the gears especially when you're in first and second gear. You know the wheels can just set on fire essentially so it's really nice to have it a bit down you can have it a lot lower if you really need but i think then you'll start to um, lose performance when you're actually applying the acceleration because the car will just feel too st stiff it won't turn for you which is critical around turns one two and three particularly at Catalunya national and then as for deceleration we have 15 percent so i don't think it helps a lot at Catalonia, but i think it will help on tracks where there's a lot of um, braking zones that are actually downhill going into corners but yeah, so that's the tune. Um, I've already shared it as well, so you can just find it on the storefront and just put in my name or anything else. And yeah, you'll find it. People have already downloaded it and are using it. But I look forward to getting a lot more feedback from people um, in the comments below on this video. Do let me know what you think of my tune around different circuits um, and also what you find with trying to tune cars like these really high powered and cars in our class um, it'd be great to get your thoughts and I'm happy to answer any questions as well that you might have so that wraps up our first ever tuning guide um, I hope you've all enjoyed watching and I hope it helps you as well uh, do feel free to subscribe if you like this video because I'm going to be pumping out a lot more tuning guides for cars in the coming weeks and months and we shall see you again in the next video